David here with Fig Boot on Pens. Today I have a, uh, a very unique pen from an interesting company that I like very much. Uh, the company is Keras Customs, and the pen is the Fountain K. So what I'm going to do is go over the parts and features of the Fountain K, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about it, uh, show some measurements, size comparisons, and then provide a writing sample. Uh, and then stay tuned to learn how you can win this very pen, courtesy of Keras Customs, who generously provided this pen for review and for giveaway. Uh, a little backstory, uh, Keras Customs was started back in 2008 by Bill Keras, who owned a machine shop in Mesa, Arizona, which is pretty close to Phoenix. Um, and that his shop manufactured things like cell phone cases and, and had a few Kickstarter projects that were successful before they began manufacturing fountain pens, uh, which they also launched via Kickstarter. Uh, the Fountain K, however, was a pen that Keras Customs launched on their own uh, back in uh, late, of two late 2015 uh, without a Kickstarter project. Uh, and the pen has been very well received since that time. You know, a, a goal of the company Keras Customs isn't just to make writing instruments, but to make things that people care about. Uh, things that are timeless and well made and that will last a lifetime. Uh, the box comes in this very retro looking box, which is kind of cool. Uh, I like the saying on the back here. It says, uh, dozens of satisfied customers. I just thought that was kind of funny. Uh, inside the box, it kind of flips open here. And we have the pen, and then that flips open. And we have some, a uh, couple of things of instructions. Then there is, uh, five or six uh, Monteverde black cartridges. Then uh, there is also a little doohickey you see here uh, that is a, a piece of plastic with a spring on the end. And what you do is you put this in the end of the barrel and it helps present, prevent a cartridge from coming loose and causing a mess inside the barrel. So it's nice that they include that. Sometimes people put two cartridges in there, but this has a spring on it, so it's a, a little bit better technology. So that's nice. Uh, and then here, oh, they include a nice sticker as well. Uh, and here is the pen, the Fountain K. Um, that, as I mentioned, that uh, Keras Custom says that this pen was designed with the intention of it being timeless. That, you know, if you opened up a, a desk drawer or a toolbox of your grandfather and pulled out this pen, that it would be something that wouldn't look out of place. You know, it's a machined pen, uh, which is a piece of craftsmanship um, that could have been made 50 years ago. Uh, the Fountain K comes in three different materials. Uh, this is the brass version. Uh, it also comes in aluminum as well as copper. Uh, the aluminum version features an anodized finish, which kind of helps protect the body from damage. Uh, and that version is available in a wide variety of colors. Um, brass is a look that I like a lot. Um, brass is an alloy, which is created from the combination of copper and zinc. Um, Brass typically contains about 60% copper, about 35% zinc, and then the other 5% is usually made up of a small amount of other metals like tin and iron and things like that. Uh, the combination of those metals makes the material much more sturdy uh, and easier to machine uh, into something that's virtually indestructible. Now, I, I've shown the video during my review of the Keras Custom Ink, but uh, in a, view, a video overview of the brand, uh, Brian Goulet uh, of Goulet Pens throws a Fountain K across the parking lot and runs it over with a car. And other than just a couple of small dings, it was undamaged. Uh, it would take a lot to hurt this pen. Uh, brass will actually tarnish, and so you have two choices uh, with a brass pen. You can polish it on a regular basis to keep it looking shiny and brand new, uh, or you can let it patina, which over time will give the pen more of a unique look and add a bit more personality to it, as it will have a tendency to patina more where the oils from your hand come in contact with the brass. So, uh, you know, in this particular pen, the wear and tear and tarnishing looks really great in my opinion, uh, and makes the pen a unique piece of art that creates kind of a close personal relationship between you and the pen, because no one else's pen will uh, be quite like yours.
Uh, the Keras Customs pens, not necessarily the, the ink, but the Keras Customs pens have been featured in film and television. Uh, in the, the 2016 film Keeping Up with the Joneses, uh, it featured a Keras Custom uh, ballpoint model called the Bolt. Uh, you can see it here on the floor. Uh, and in an earlier scene, the, the pen was used as a spy weapon that shot out a tranquilizer dart. Uh, I believe Keras Customs is going to be used in a Canadian TV show. I don't think we, we understand which one that will be or have a name for that. Uh, and it was supposedly used in the recent release of uh, season three of the Netflix show, uh, The Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. Uh, Keras Customs was asked to provide a pen to the production company for the show, and they were told it was going to be used sometime during the season. Now, uh, I wasn't able to locate it anywhere during the season, so uh, I have a feeling it might have ended up on the cutting room floor. Uh, a quick story about that that I thought was kind of funny. Um, I, you know, I'd heard some good things about the Kimmy Smith show, but it isn't a show that I have watched. So rather than watching an entire season of a show uh, that I, I don't watch, I recruited members of the, the Reddit subreddit dedicated to the show to help me find the pen in the show. Uh, and though the fans of the show, I thought the fans of the show might like a little scavenger hunt. Uh, they were helpful. They found a number of scenes during the season which actually had metal pens. Uh, during the first episode, the uh, title character signed some papers with a metal pen. So, nope, that is not theirs. Uh, then someone actually suggested that it might be one of the pens here in the boardroom scene. You know, I, I really couldn't tell, so I emailed Keras Customs to ask them to check out out if they could uh, find their pen in the scene. And Paul, who runs their marketing, emailed me back asking if this was some kind of joke. And, you know, I was confused for a bit because we had been talking back and forth about it. But then I realized what had happened, which was a bit of an amazing coincidence. Um, I had told Paul to look at the wrong episode. I told him to look at a specific time, but in episode 7, rather than episode 10. And the funny thing is, is that at that precise time, in the incorrect episode, a character is talking to his friendly neighborhood crack dealer. You know, hey, this is a quirky comedy. Uh, and in order to promote his product, uh, the uh, dealer, just like other pharmaceutical companies, hands out free pens. Uh, and that uh, he handed out a free pen to uh, this gentleman here. And that uh, Paul had seen this and thought I was just joking around. But, I mean, what are the chances that in two different episodes at the exact same timestamp, pens were featured? I just thought that was kind of a funny coincidence. Uh, bottom line is, though, that no one could find the pen in this season, so who knows, it might show up at a later time. Uh, back to the pen, though. Uh, one of the very cool things about ordering a Fountain K is that you, really, you can mix and match materials. There are three metals um, and something like ten colors and five different section options. Uh, you can see here that the same model of the pen can have a number of different looks. Uh, let's start at the end here. Uh, the end of the cap is slightly rounded, uh, and then about uh, half an inch of the end of the cap has this cool knurling. Um, for me, the, the knurling serves two purposes. One is, I think it looks cool, uh, and it provides kind of an interesting tactile feeling when you're holding the cap in your hand. And, uh, you know, I find myself rubbing my fingers over the pattern. Uh, then we have this clip which is very thick and sturdy metal. Um, it doesn't have a lot of give to it, but I, I do find that it's very functional. Um, you know, I like the shape of the clip as well, uh, but, uh, you know, I feel it matches the industrial design of the pen uh, very well. Um, however, there are two screws at the top of this clip. Now, I like the looks of having these two screws, but it bugs me a, a bit that the orientation of the screws doesn't match one another. In a perfect world, I, I'd like to see the grooves in the screws, uh, which are actually called drives, uh, either uh, horizontal or both horizontal or both vertical. Having them random like that just kind of pains me a little bit. But I know that's just me. Uh, the cap is straight, uh, and then there's no cap band at all. Uh, in fact, there's no branding or marketing or markings on this pen at all, other than the, uh, the Bach logo on the nib, which we'll see here in a second. Uh, the barrel tapers down just slightly, a little over two millimeters from the, uh, the threads down to the end of the barrel. Uh, and then the end of the barrel is slightly rounded. Uh, the cap twists off 
And the, uh, you know, one thing I like is that the pen is triple threaded, meaning that there are three different sets of threads here on the barrel. Um, the benefit of that is that just by barely twisting the cap, you're already securing the pen, uh, and you're not just kind of spinning the cap in search of a thread. So uh, that's just something that I liked. And here underneath, we have a number five Bach steel nib. Uh, the nib does have box logo, like I mentioned, and uh, no markings as to size, but this is a medium. And then here's a look at the plastic feed. Uh, the the, uh, the nib is available in extra fine, fine, uh, medium, 1.1, 1.5, and 1.8. Uh, for an additional $5, you can actually get a, a black nib. Uh, and $90 additional will get you a gold nib, uh, both of which are available in extra fine, fine, medium, and broad. Uh, the section is tapered just a little bit, and a little bit on the thin side, but I do find it comfortable. Uh, and even though this section is solid metal, uh, I personally don't have any issues when it comes to gripping the pen. The, uh, the brass has a, a bit of, uh, of texture to it to hold on to. Uh, I don't find it slick. And, and I'm really not a fan of slick metal sections. Uh, the section transitions to the cap threads, which are a bit on the sharp side if you rub them, but I really don't have any issues with my grip, even when my fingers are lying directly on the threads. Uh, the cap does post, but I really wouldn't recommend it. Um, it, it does post very shallow, uh, and uh, the weight of this metal cap really throws off the balance significantly. Uh, the barrel is long enough, so you really don't need the added length of the cap. Plus, as I mentioned earlier, uh, you know, I like kind of playing around with the cap in my hand when I'm using this Fountain K. Uh, the Fountain K is a cartridge converter pen. Uh, it comes with a converter and it accepts standard international cartridges. Um, the base price for an aluminum Fountain K is $80 on the Keras Custom site. Um, the full brass model, like this one here that I'll be giving away, retails for $105. And if you were to get a full copper model with a gold nib, that would bring the price up to $220. And, you know, each of these price points offers a pretty good value for the money. Um, the, the Fountain K is a unique, well-crafted, machined pen that is, in my opinion, definitely worth the price. Um, it, you know, it's an attention-grabbing pen, especially for folks that normally aren't interested in fountain pens. Now, you know, I use fountain pens every day at work, every day. And most days, no one is going to ask me about the pen I'm using, no matter how fancy or expensive it is. But, you know, when I brought the Fountain K to work the other day, I had two people comment to me uh, how much they liked this pen because they, they thought it was kind of cool. So it does get some attention, and rightfully so. So thanks go out to Keras Customs for providing this Fountain K for review and giveaway. Um, if you would like to enter to win this very pen, simply leave a comment here on YouTube. Uh, today is Saturday, July 15th, and you have until sometime late in the day on Tuesday the 18th to enter. Uh, you know, in regard to a, a topic, uh, the Fountain K is a very good metal pen. So why don't you let me know about what your favorite metal pen is? The comment topic is not required, just a suggestion. And uh, you know what, in regard to giveaways, uh, I had this hap happen in a giveaway for the very first time for the uh, Diplomat Arrow a couple of weeks ago that the winner never got back to me and I was forced to uh, pick a replacement winner. So, uh, you know, I, I really hate that that happens. So, you know, if you win, uh, you just need to get back to me within a reasonable amount of time. Uh, just so you know the process, if you are randomly selected to win the giveaway, uh, you know, I'll respond to your comment, which will give you a little notification in YouTube that someone has done so. Uh, and then I'll ask you uh, that you'll provide me with your contact info so I can get your prize out to you promptly. So, yeah, if you're lucky enough to be chosen, then I don't want to be forced to have to give your prize to somebody else. So, okay, now it's time for some measurements, some size comparisons, and a writing sample. Here we go with some size comparisons for the uh, Keras Customs Fountain K. Uh, that uh, Here it is in comparison with the uh, Keras Custom Ink, which is another uh, great one of their pens that I like a lot. Uh, and then here it is with a Pilot Metropolitan. 
Uh, and then here it is with something I picked up at the uh, at the Raleigh Pen Show, which is a uh, a color prototype of the uh, Franklin Christoph Model 66. And I guess I could frame that better. It just barely fits in there, or it doesn't quite fit in there at all. But that's what you can see. It's a, a it's larger compared to uh, the Fountain K. Then in regard to some other pens, here it is with a Visconti Homo Stapiens uh, Sterling Silver, uh, then a uh, Sailor King of Pen Ebonite, uh, and then here it is with a, uh, a Nakaya Dorsal Fin Number 2, which I'd like to review sooner rather than later as well, because uh, this is a, a pretty amazing pen as well. So here we have the Keras Custom and this is the Fountain K. And this is a medium steel nib uh, and the ink we're using today is Crone Tutankhamun. Uh, this is what the uh, the ink looks like. Uh, it's a kind of a, a, a sandy brown. Uh, kind of reminded me a little bit about uh, like the, the Conway Stewart King Sand. Uh, then here it is in comparison to uh, SBRE Brown, which is a little bit on the uh, more on the redder side of brown. Um, but uh, the Tutankhamun is nice. Uh, this is what the bottle looks like. Uh, that uh, I hadn't tried Crone inks before, uh, but picked up this bottle at the Fountain Pen Hospital in New York when I was up there, uh, and uh, that I, it was just uh, something I hadn't seen before, so I wanted to pick that up. So, here we go with a writing sample. Uh, this nib is a bit on the firm side. Um, you're not going to get tons of line variation out of here, uh, starting with just a little pressure and adding some more. You can get a little bit out of there. Um, but, you know, I think a, a real soft nib wouldn't necessarily match with this metal pen. That I, I kind of like that it's a bit on the, the firm side. Uh, in regard to wetness, um, that I wouldn't say it's overly wet. It's kind of on the medium side of wetness, and in regard to reverse writing, you can get a little bit out of it. Uh, and then in regard to some fast writing, there's no issues whatsoever. So um, I wanted to say thanks to Keras Custom, or Customs rather, for the uh, gift of this pen for review and for giveaway uh, that uh, I'll put a link down below in the notes if you'd like to check out this pen on the Keras Custom site. Uh, and don't forget to enter the contest to win this very pen, which uh, I actually like a, a great deal. That um, This is one of those pens that I've reviewed that I might need to go out and, uh, and purchase one of my own because uh, I have grown rather fond of this. And I think it's very well built, very well machined, and uh, I just kind of like the looks and feel of it and the performance. So I uh, probably need to go out and pick up one of my own. So thank you for watching, and we'll talk to you later.